says it to Christ. But now this is the way. Show him in the book that he's holding in his hand. You say, Barnabas? I don't know Barnabas. I haven't seen Barnabas. You say, no, I'll produce it. But just say, I don't know. I don't want to know Barnabas. Show me Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. So you speak to him on that basis. There is a better chance for you to prove your case to him than to talk about Barnabas. So uh, my suggestion is, for your own entertainment, very good. Barnabas is very good. But don't waste your time in trying to convince the Christians with Barnabas. Okay? Jazakallah. Yes, brother. I was a leader. You can play a lot of references in the book of the Testament of the Bible. Yet, when I import the Bible to my brother, they don't understand what he means. The question is that Mr. Didat has made a lot of references to the Bible. The brother says when he quotes the Bible, the brothers do not accept the, those quotations. You see, what I'm quoting you now are words, for example, if you have a red letter Bible. I think you know. I think you are a Christian. And as such, you know what is a. Huh? You wear, right? Uh, the Christians have what is called a red letter Bible. The red letter Bible, everything that Jesus spoke is in red. In the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and throughout the 27 books, everything that Jesus spoke is in red. So he says, right, if this is what you say he spoke, I'm quoting Jesus to you. But there are other things besides. They do not hold the same value in our sight, in the sight of the Muslim. So now there'll be arguments and debates. We are now arguing on interpretations, which we have said, let's reason, let us reason. But now, what do we think of the Bible? What do we believe about the Bible? There is a book available in the foyer, written by me, is the Bible God's Word. In a nutshell, I will tell you there that there are three types of evidences in the Bible, which any sensible man can see. In the Bible, you will find the Word of God, God's Word. For example, if I quote you from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, verse 18, God says, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. You ask any Jew, who is this I? He says, God. Ask any Christian, who is this I? He says, God. As it also appears to me that God is talking. Or in the book of Isaiah, God says, I, I am God and there's none else. I am God and there's none like me. You ask any Jew who's talking, he says, God. Ask any Christian who's talking, he says, God. And I have no hesitation in accepting it, that this is God's word. That's one type of evidence you'll find in the Bible, where we have no hesitation in accepting it. Then there is another type of evidence which I quoted you. Jesus says, but I say unto you, but I say unto you, who is this I? Jesus. So we say that's the word of the prophet, prophet of God. Then there is another type of evidence where it reads in the New Testament, while he, Jesus, was going forth into the way, he saw a fig tree in the distance with leaves. Happily, he came up to it, wanting to find figs thereon, but when he came, there was nothing but leaves. Whose words are they? Not God, not Jesus, but an eyewitness or a ear witness, or somebody speaking from hearsay. So I said, we in the house of Islam, we also have similar evidences in our religion. We have the Quran, the word of God. Then we have the books of Hadith, traditions, sayings of the Prophet, separate volume. It's not to be mixed with this. Then we have the writings of our philosophers, Imam Ghazali, Ibn Taymiyyah, and so on and so on. Again, not on the same level as the word of the Prophet. Then we have also our Arabian Nights. <laughs> Which you know where they belong. See, the fairy tales among the Arabs. They spoke around the campfires of filthy, dirty, pornographic uh, stories. So there are different, different types of evidence, but we are the most fortunate of all religious groups that our stories are all in separate compartments. And we do not equate the words of the prophet with the words of God, and we don't equate the words of a wise man with the words of the prophet. And of course, the Arabian Nights, we know where they belong. Can you see? So, the, unfortunately, the Christian and the Jews have not been able to separate their books. So the word of God is in the book, the word of the prophet is in the book, the word of the historian is in the book, and many things besides, which is very difficult for people to read to the, to the mother or sister or, or daughter, or even to the girlfriend if she's 
a very straightforward person. So this is how we evaluate. The book is available. There are 50 pence each, two for, any two for a, a pound. And if you feel that's too much, you write to me, I'll send you free from South Africa. But you know, uh, don't be a beggar, that mentality. Don't have a beggar mentality. He says, man, you got a pound? Said, Come, give me any two. Pick them up and take them. And the Quran is also available. 2,000 pages for six pounds. Anybody who have access to this, they are available in the foyer. Pleasure. Next question, please. Okay. Are you a Muslim? Huh? Look, I had the guys playing tricks on me in Pakistan. And since then, I have vowed. Did you understand my talk in English? Some, no good. Then there's no sense in me wasting time. If you understood some, now I have to start re-explaining to you again. If you understood it, then you can ask the question in English, if you understood. If you didn't, it's just too bad. I'm sorry. You have to get the speech translated by somebody. No Urdu. Small question. No good, small or big. If you understood my English, you have a right to ask me. If you didn't, please don't waste the people's time and my time. Thank you, brother. Never. Huh? Some of the lectures. In English, can you ask? In English. Can you ask the question in English? You are welcome. Go ahead. He was describing that between Islam, Judaism, and Christianity, there is no difference in basic teachings. If there is no difference, then why Christian they follow Islam or why Jews uh, they follow Islam? Why don't they? The question that the brother has put in is that the speaker said throughout the evening that there was no fundamental difference in the teachings of Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. If that is the case, or that being the case, why doesn't all three religions then, or, or why doesn't the Christians and Jews follow the teachings of Islam as prescribed by, as prescribed in Islam? It's quite a knowledge. Quite in order. You see, we are the children of our environment programming. In the fundamentals, as I proved to you, no difference. Moses said, one God. Jesus said, one God. Muhammad said, one God. Now, in the interpretations, people differ. You see, you ask the Christian, how many gods are there? He'll tell you one God. What is this God like? Then he says, there are Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He believes in a triune God, three in one. We said, did Jesus teach that? No. Where did you get it? He said, well, there is a verse in the Bible, first epistle of John, chapter five, verse seven, where it says, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. That is the clearest statement on the Trinity in the Bible of the Roman Catholics and the Protestants. But if you take any modern translation done by the Christian scholars today, the Revised Version, the Revised Standard Version, the American Standard Version, the New World Translation, every translation has thrown this verse out as a fabrication. But prejudices die hard. You see, once you accept, if the Christian accepts that, look, this was, it is not there. Who took them out? Not the Muslims, not the Jews. The Christian scholars, 32 scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 52 cooperating denominations in the revised version of the Bible, they said it's a fabrication and they threw out the verse on the Trinity. But the common man, the lady, the priest, they'll still keep on preaching it. Because if they say, yes, there is no such thing in the words of Jesus, and even in the Bible there is no such statement, this is a concoction, immediately they'll become Muslims. They'll lose their businesses. If you lose all your church-going members, what are you going to do with all your 